Welcome to A Look Ahead. We're delighted you decided to join us. We study the Sabbath School lessons as prepared by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and this series is entitled Christian Education. And we have an interesting lesson this time on the Christian and work. Work? Is that part of Christian education? Well, let's find out. This is number, uh, lesson number 11 for December 12 of 2020. And as usual, we'd like to begin with a word of prayer. Our wonderful Father, we're here understanding and studying together your word. What a wonderful exposition it is of the truths that we sometimes overlook. Be with us as we study this lesson. We think about the role that work should have in our and giving us opportunities to witness for you is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, which would you rather live? A life busy with activity or a life of complete leisure with nothing specific that you have to do? Uh, well, for a little while, life of leisure might seem great. However, most of us would become bored and would be looking for something to do. Of course, there are some of us who would be happy to fill our lives with leisure activities. Called retirement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Do you think Adam and Eve were disappointed with the work that God gave them to do in the Garden of Eden? No. Absolutely not. What do we, we do not know everything that they did. Did they plant anything new? What happened to the fruit that developed on the trees? Did it just stay in perfect condition, waiting for them to harvest it? You know, this is a time of year when there's a lot of fruits. And you know, it's so there's such a difference between getting one that's a little green still and getting one that's perfectly ripe and or, and or getting one that's a little too overripe and already starting to deteriorate. And you like to get it just at that right point and they're so delicious if you get them just perfect. Well, did they just develop up to that perfect point and just wait for Adam and Eve to come pick them? Oh, no. <laughs> and if the garden was of any size at all, there's no way the two of them could have consumed all the fruit, nuts and grains, that would have been produced. Did they feed the animals with some of the food? What did the animals eat? Do you remember what the Bible says? Grass. The grass of the field. In any case, I'm sure their work was enjoyable and exciting. However, now we live between the time when the Garden of Eden was placed on this earth at creation and the Garden of Eden that will come back to this earth at the third coming. We're in that gap period. And the lion is going to eat grass. Is it still true that work can be a blessing? Yes. From the Bible we know that clearly that every Jewish child, at least the males, were to, be a taught, were to be taught a trade. It was a criminal act for a father not to teach his son a trade. And think of the experience of Jesus who spent most of his time on this earth working in a carpenter shop. Don't you wish you could see some of the work he produced? Is it possible that some Roman Catholic church somewhere has a piece of work that Jesus supposedly produced? <laughs> That's pushing it a bit. Isn't that uh, at least uh, in pilot stairway? Uh, oh, yeah. In, uh, they say that they brought it from yeah. and just walked on it. And yeah. you've seen it, you know, all these yeah. people are kneeling down, weeping and going yep. up. At least Martin Luther was on that and yep. uh, half the way says. But you can go to Jerusalem and you can go down underground and you go to that, the place where uh, the, 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 the pavement that's left that was right before that stairs. So Jesus would have had to have come down those stairs and, and I don't know whether those stairs are the ones that came from that spot or not. I, they claim that they were miraculously transported to Rome. But at least the pavement w that was at the bottom of those stairs is still there. And Jesus walked over it, up the stairs to Pilate's place and back down again. It's still there and you can, you can see it. One thing we know though, uh, the stairway, uh, the, the cell where Peter and Paul in different times were put in. Uh, mm -hmm. It's still there. It's still there. And it's, it's really, truly humbling. Or, or what's yes. the word to express? When they, the man who hated Christianity and wanted to destroy this nonsense, 
walked him up, and this man, 80 some years old, knew that they were going to behead him outside. Mm. It's really, truly, I mean, uh, you just yeah. stand there speechless. Yeah. To, and see that. See, I wonder like often is where did they get their saws from? That takes some pretty good metal, yeah. and you've got to sharpen it up, and you've got to get the teeth crisp. Just off. right. Just right, yes. We don't give them credit for stuff like that, yeah. but they had to have had it somewhere. Well, what kind of carpentry did Jesus do? Did he and his father travel to the nearby city of Sepphoris to work for the Roman legion who was established there? Did they build houses as well as furniture and other things that could be built in a shop? Or at least plows? Yeah. yeah. We know quite a, quite a bit more about the Apostle Paul's work. The Roman government had soldiers established almost everywhere, and many of them lived in tents. We do not know if the, the, there was one standard pattern that was expected for all these tents or not, but obviously many, many tents were needed. And as I think about that, I, I'm always amused when I see artist pictures of the children of Israel camped at the foot of Mount Sinai, yes. all lined up in neat army yeah. <laughs> Our army tents that came from the U.S. military about 50 years ago or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, there were times in Paul's life when he worked much of the night so he could preach during the day. Think about it. I, I think Aquila and Priscilla, they were mm -hmm. also tent makers with him. Yep. We're going to talk about yeah. that in a moment. But there were other times when he was supported by the work being done by other members of his team so that he was able to focus on his writing and ministry. Acts 18. Acts 18, verses 1 to 4. After this, Paul left Athens and went up, went on to Corinth. To Corinth, There he met a Jew named Aquila, born in, in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, for the emperor Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to them and stayed went to see them went to see them and stayed and worked with them because he earned his living by making tents just as they did he held discussions in the synagogue every sabbath trying to convince both the jews and the greeks that is from the american bible society in 1992 good news bible okay and second thessalonians second thessalonians 3 verses 8 to 12 we did not accept anyone's support without paying for it. Instead, we worked and toiled. We kept working day and night so, that, so as not to be an expense to any of you. We did this not because we had no right to demand our support. We did it to be an example for you to follow. While we were with you, we used to say to you, whoever refuses to work is not allowed to eat. Now, do we... Um what would happen if we started preaching that today? <laughs> that is <laughs> long gone. We say this because we hear that there, are, excuse me, that there are some people among you who live lazy lives and who do not do nothing except meddle in other people's business. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command these people and warn them to lead orderly lives and work to earn their own living. Wow. Solomon is thought to have been the wisest man who ever lived. Obviously, he did many, many things, most of which seem to have been for his own pleasure. Gary? I'm reading from chapter 3, verses 12 and 13 from the book of Ecclesiastes. So I realize that all we can do is to be happy and do the best we can while we are still alive. All of us should eat and drink and enjoy what we have worked for. It is God's gift. That's from the Good News Bible. Wow. So what is implied by the word work? It is a simple Anglo-Saxon word, the word itself. Work implies doing some job to put food on the table, or pay the bills, and hopefully save a little for the future. To many people, losing a job is worse than doing an unpleasant job. Work also gives a person a sense of purpose and worth. It is often how we respond when someone asks, what do you do? We just immediately we think about our work, right? 
It is also true that many retired persons continue to either work part-time or volunteer. Why is that? If you don't work, you, go, you die early, to put yeah. it bluntly. There is good evidence that giving a teenager a job, especially if it is something that he likes or at least does not mind doing, will keep him out of delinquency. That, I think we need to spend a little time here. Yeah. Um, how many of the Adventist educational institutions in this country now has, you have got to work if you come to our school? How many? Very few. Very few. No. Very few. Well, and, and this, by the way, is around the world now. I'm sitting here. I was working three hours a day, eight-year-old kid in an Adventist boarding school, and there's no such thing now anymore. Yeah. And I take great joy, pride in uh, what I did. The school where I, where I w w went to academy, boarding school, has a beautiful uh, um, woodworking, not just woodworking, what would you call it? Furniture factory. Huh? Furniture, furniture factory, furniture. but not just furniture. They, they actually, no. Uh, well, maybe it was at one time, I don't know. But yes, now, it's a, now it's a big lumber production company. Yes. But they say they have too much trouble training the kids to do the job right, and then by the time they get them trained, they leave school. So now here's this beautiful factory sitting right next to the school, and it's run by professionals. Yeah. Well, look at what happened to little Debbie. Yeah. I mean, it got bought out. I mean, it was a wonderful support for Southern Missionary. Mm -hmm. Wonderful support. Yeah. Gone. Back yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is around the world. Yeah. Advent work is a part of Adventist education. It's true yeah. education. Yeah, yeah. Well, part of the part of the life is of young people. Their parents carry them around on a velvet pillow and yeah. don't teach them what work is. Yeah. Uh, My I, dad put me to work I, down here at the academy back in when I was eleven years old, yeah. and I never stopped. I never learned how to water ski and do several things like that. But I don't regret it. By, by the time I was fifteen, I was baking forty loaves of bread a day, sometimes eighty loaves of bread a day by myself, feeding a uh, feeding a, the, all the students at the academy, eight, eight three hundred students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Part that, of the that's problem. That's part of education. Yeah, that is education. Mm -hmm. The part of the problem today is all the government regulations yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. But they could it overpowers the ability for kids to do things. And as a religious institution, you can get around right. a lot right. of that. Right. And not for profit. When I was a kid, uh, back where I'm from, the college had a 44-acre orchard on some of the best land that was deeded to the college by some early Adventists in the valley. Yeah, It's still there. Now if it's a boarding high school, they or uh, there's lodges come from out of some of the farms, or you worked in the sanitarium health food factory, uh, mm -hmm. did both, enjoyed yeah. both, it was good for you. In some place, many, most of the places I know, there's no more work, okay? I mean, right. they could call it child abuse. I was working yes. three hours a day, yeah. you know, but I look back I had with to, joy, great joy. I had to, to get up. And go to work at five o'clock in the morning I to, to get my to get my my right. bread all ready and out of the oven in time to go to class. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. And it made you perhaps who you are. You see now what's happening now. Uh, this is going around the world. I'll tell you, the mighty dollar that we send in places of the world would yeah. destroy our young people, yeah. and it needs to stop. I'm passionate about this. This is so wrong. Yeah. So they, the leaders that we produce are many of them are not committed to Adventism, and that mm. is so sad. Well, that I is think, so sad. Uh, if you see Maranatha at work out in India and some of those places, they've got them working. Yeah, yeah but there. the institutions that you go to that is run by the church, that's a different story. Well, this, this, well, I'm talking it is. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> okay. But, Work is first mentioned in the Bible in Genesis 3, 19. 19. You will have to work hard and sweat to make the soil produce anything. Well, we did. We're under, we're under curse. So, but in, until you go back to the soil from which, which you were formed, you were made from soil and you will become soil again. Mm -hmm. Goodness Bible. Yeah. Of course, we know that work was not a part of the punishment for sin because Adam and Eve had their work 
while they were still in the garden. Yes. There are, unfortunately, many people who feel that their jobs are complete drudgery and they hope, to, they hope to retire as quickly as possible. However, others come to think of their job as what gives their life meaning and identity. If they are away from their work for too long, they feel depressed or disoriented. Sometimes in retirement, such people fall apart physically and psychologically, even die prematurely. Mm -hmm. yeah. But for Christians, work should be more than just earning a living. No matter, how, no matter what industry or type of work one is involved in, his or her life work is supposed to be combined with his or her spiritual ministry. How can we best integrate a spiritual component into the work that we are currently doing? I struggle with that every day, and I'm trying to find new and better ways to reach out to my fellow workers and to my patients, and I, I think I'm finding some... I've been there for 25 years. It's time for me to figure out how to do it, right? <laughs> But, but you see, there's silent witness, and I know you are. One day for, for fun, do something unusual that you would not. You see how many eyebrows go up. Yeah. <laughs> Get hurt? No way he could not do that. Or no way he could say that. You see, but they respect, and you do not even know. They know that there's something, something special yeah. about this man. So. Almost everyone has to do something at his work. Sometimes it's nothing more than pressing computer keys, but it's still doing something. Intelligently, hopefully. <laughs> Diana? Deuteronomy 16.15 Honor the Lord your God by celebrating this festival for seven days at the one place of worship. Be joyful because the Lord has blessed your harvest and your work. I'm going to interrupt there for just a second, just to put the context here. Where is the one place God told them they could go and celebrate the, harvest, the, the festival? This is not a trick question. Where were they supposed to gather? Jerusalem. Jerusalem, sure. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes 9.10 Work hard at whatever you do, because there will be no action, no thought, no knowledge, no wisdom in the world of the dead. And that is where you are going. <laughs> Proverbs 21, 25. Lazy people who refuse to work are only killing themselves. Yeah. Jeremiah 1, 16. I will punish my people because they have sinned. They have abandoned me, have offered sacrifices to other gods, and have made idols and worshipped them. Should we believe that God has given us work to do to find fulfillment and joy? Yes. Just thinking about work does not take the place of actually doing something. Here's a couple of quotes from Proverbs, the famous book by, mostly by Solomon. Proverbs 10.4 Being lazy will make you poor, but hard work will make you rich. And Proverbs 12.14 Your reward depends on what you say and what you do. You will get what you deserve. So in what sense is work intended to be a blessing? Jim? Psalms 90, verse 17. The Lord our God, may your blessings be with us. Give us success in all that we do. Okay, one of the blessings of work is that we may earn something with which we can give, we can, which we can give to support God's work in other parts of the world. So part of what we do with the money we earn is supposed to support God's work. I'm reading Jerry? from Acts 20. Verses 34 to 35. You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. Mm. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. That's from the New International Version. And it's very interesting, this, this verse, that last little bit that you read there, has given scholars all sorts of fits. Uh, I shouldn't say fits, they've been struggling around, because we don't know where that came from. It means that, that Paul had access to some information about the, the teachings of Jesus and what he said and so forth that we don't have anymore. Yeah, could be. They were about the same age. Yeah, yeah. We do, um, Paul, well, might, Paul might have been a little, little bit younger. Younger, a little bit, perhaps a few years. And yeah. Paul, having been so educated, have been in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. I, it could be that 
Well, it could be. We cannot. Yeah. He, Paul says, you know, I saw Jesus in vision. Yeah. He doesn't okay. talk about right. seeing him in person. So, Well, think of the story of Nehemiah that we studied a few quarters ago. He met with almost every kind of opposition that one can imagine. So he prayed, but now God, make me strong. Nehemiah 6, 9. Glance over Exodus 25, verse 10 to 30, verse 38. We don't have time, obviously, to even come close to reading all those six chapters. But this is the detailed instructions about making the tabernacle, the tent, the different layers, the, the different items, the, the stuff in the courtyard and the stuff in the holy place and the stuff in the most holy place. And exactly how, I mean, in, in detail, exactly how it's supposed to be made. In these six chapters, God gave an incredible amount of detail about constructing the tabernacle in the wilderness. Why did he need to go into all that detail? Probably had tradesmen for those rearing things. Yeah. Maybe and yet we saved. know that he specifically gifted some people, didn't he? Yes. 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 Re remember that Moses had probably lived in tents for the previous 40 years. He knew how to make a tent, probably how to make a good tent, and how to set it up so it would not collapse in the, in the wind. But this tent was very special. Look at the different uh, coverings and the detailed description of the furniture inside the tent. There were five layers, yes, right. five layers of tent coverings there. It must have been pretty cool inside. Yeah. Very large. Mm -hmm. It had inside. to be very special to keep the furniture. And yet it had to be designed so that they could roll it up or whatever they, whatever you want to call it, fold it up, roll it, and carry it away. Right. Just move it. And it was, it was made after a pattern. Mm -hmm. What I showed you that's happening in heaven. Yep. Yeah, he showed him, and then, and you wonder, when you read those chapters I just made reference to, Exodus 25 to 30, did Paul, I mean, not Paul, did Moses see the pattern in heaven and then he wrote down all these details based on what he saw in heaven or did God show him the pattern and he says, okay, here are the details. I think, it, and when it was moved, it was moved very, in a certain way, always a certain way. It had to be carried certain a certain way. Certain people who did this and certain people who did that and certain people who carried certain parts, yeah. What does it say about our worship then? Yeah. About the place we worship. Mm-hmm. It can be very simple, yeah. but it can be elegant, yes. perhaps the word. Yeah. Yeah. It is clear in Exodus 25, and let me just read that. There's a few verses that give us an idea here. The table for the bread offered to God. Make a table out of acacia word, 88 centimeters long, 44 centimeters wide. This is using the centimeter measurements, and 66 centimeters high. I mean, this is precise. Mm. Cover it with pure gold and put a gold border around it. Make a rim 75 millimeters wide, round it and a gold border around the rim. Make four carrying rings of gold for it and put them at the four corners where the legs are. The rings to hold the poles for carrying the tables are to be placed near the rim. Make the poles of acacia wood and cover them with gold. Make plates, cups, jars, and bowls to be used for the wine offerings. All of these are to be made of pure gold. The table is to be placed in front of the covenant box and on the table is always to be the sacred bread offered to me. I mean, that's pretty precise detail. <laughs> you know, I, I cannot help but make another con uh, statement. Um, I've been to the Ark mm -hmm. in northern Kentucky, uh, very precise, mm -hmm. made by Ken Ham, a gentleman from Australia. And he knows Adventism, by the way, pretty well. Mm -hmm. It's breathtaking to yeah. go and walk through. How did this ever get put together? You know, 120 years to build mm -hmm. this ark. And yeah, it was possible to get every one, uh, seven pairs of uh, um, clean, clean. Uh, the ones that are uh, uh, not pure. Yeah. Uh, the, the ones that can be eaten and the ones mm -hmm. that are not, you know, to be to be in that ark. And the food and the yeah. way the water was. Uh, they keep them from eating each other. Yeah, they do. <laughs> so, yeah. but fascinating to see that place. Yeah. And it's must have, I mean, how do you, what about the animals who's, as far as we know, they eat other animals? That is, well. What were they eating? What were they eating during yeah. the time they were in the ark? Eat each other. Mm. 
keep them separate. Mm. <laughs> we don't know. Maybe they started <laughs> to eat grass again. We don't I know. I say they probably had what we would call hay and stuff like that. They had to be yeah. Try feeding hay to lions. Go to, you know, but then the lambs would go to the lions or something like that. <laughs> right. we all, we're only, there was a, only a few lambs there. There, is, the, there was a comedian in the seventies, and he says. Mr. Noah does not know how to deliver an elephant, you know, that, that's what's happening. <laughs> we don't know what will happen in the art. How did yeah. the evolutionists explain that one? Well, they don't think the... I know, the <laughs> I know but well, that know. would be a good one for explanation. Noah was told how many to put in there, but we mm. don't know whether God told him how to handle the stock once they were in there. It could have happened. Yeah, and you, you've probably seen there's lots of cute little cartoons about Noah and one of the one of one I enjoy, enjoy is you see them. It was already already starting to rain, and the animals just the last of the animals going in. There's the yaks and the zebras, and the one zebra turns the other and says, "Just our luck, he would take us alphabetically." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of Christians that don't believe. Yeah. In in the flood, but the evidence is overwhelming all over the world. Yeah. Really. But going back to the gold in the tent, gold is not a strong metal. No. It, it wouldn't have lasted long. It must have been for, uh, make it look better, I guess, but uh, I've handled gold bricks. They're heavy, but they go around after it all has been in the mint, and they start going over the floor. They, it's marvelous what they pick up out of bits of little bits of gold that come off bricks when they make them. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it's clear that God wanted his handwork, handiwork to be perfect. He was not interested in sloppy work. But God went, went beyond just giving all those details. He endowed individuals with the skills to do it just right. Does God endow us with skills to do the specific tasks in our day? Do you feel like God has apportioned you the work that you, get, that you do? Notice what God said about the people he chose to work for him. Exodus 31 verses 1 through 6. The Lord said to Moses, I have chosen Bezalel, Bez the mm -hmm. son of Uri, the grandson of Hur, huh, from the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with my power. I have given him understanding, skill, and ability for every kind of artistic work, for planning skillful designs and working them in gold, silver, and bronze, for cutting jewels to be set, for carving wood, and for every other kind of artistic work. Well, I think about, if you think about the differences between those, I mean, he, he's got to be a jeweler. Yes. He's got to be a metal worker. Carpenter. He's got to be a carpenter. I mean, that's a lot of different skills. Yeah. I've also selected Oholiab, son of Ashimach, uh, from the tribe of Dan, to work with him. I've also given great ability to all the other skilled workers so that they can make everything I have commanded to be made. Good news Bible. Do you know what that verse says to us about the temple that Solomon built 500 years later, 400 years later? One of the descendants of Aholiab that we just, you just mentioned had gone over and married someone in Tyre, in the area of, the area of Tyre and he was, he was hired back from, from Hiram by Solomon to help build, it, to build Solomon's temple. So apparently that skill from that family had been handed down, 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 down yeah. to him. And, and there's, there's still, still places where yeah. trades are, yeah. are, fam are father to son yeah. through the family. Okay. Exodus 35, 30 to 35. Moses said to the Israelites, The Lord has chosen Bezalel, the son of Uri, and grandson of Hur, from the tribe of Judah. God has filled him with his power and given him skill, ability, and understanding for every kind of artistic work, for planning skillful designs and working them in gold, silver, and bronze, for cutting jewels to be set, for carving wood, and for every other kind of artistic work. 
the Lord has given him unto Ohaliab, son of Ahashamash, from the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach the crafts to others. He has given them skill in all kinds of work done by engravers, designers, and weavers of fine linen, blue, purple, and red wool, and other cloth. They are able to do all kinds of work and are skillful designers. Wow. So you th this, th I mean, just think about that. That's a lot of different skills. <coughs> a lot of different skills. Meticulous. Yes. Very meticulous. meticulous. Right. Yeah. yeah. And beautiful. Very. Exodus 36, 2. Moses called Bezalel, Aholiab, and all the other skilled men to whom the Lord had given ability and who were willing to help. And Moses told them, start working. <laughs> Have you ever wondered what kind of tools the builders of the tabernacle at the foot of Mount Sani I used? Carrie, there's your question. <laughs> saws? What, did they actually have saws? They would have had to. Yeah, in timber, You'd have thought in so. Yeah, and I keep thinking Solomon's mines. They probably had iron somewhere and learned how to, yeah. how to heat I it up. Solomon's day, they did for sure. Well, yeah, yeah. they also, they were working with bronze, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. With gold. They had to melt them and uh, make them precisely how it yeah. should. Uh, so... Yeah. A lot of skills involved. And Very the Lord gave them the talent. Yeah. Yes. Any, do you think any of these people were doing jobs that they had done previously for Egyptians while they were still down in Egypt? Quite possible. It's possible. So, um, when they finished their work, did they look at it and say, Wow, that's better than I could have imagined it myself. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah. There could be no question about the fact that God intends for us to make the sharing of the gospel and the finishing of God's work on this earth our first task. So how are we to integrate that with whatever our other job is? What difference does it make if we do a good job? Jim? The story is told of a man who visited his friend who was dying in a Florida hospital. A patient lay dying at Florida hospital as his closest friend kept a vigil at his bedside. Nurses moved in and out of the room caring for the patient's needs. Seeking to keep the conversation moving, the friend asked the nurses where they had their training. Many of them had said that they were educated at Florida Hospital College. This made a big impression on the friend. He then subsequently made a, several visits to Florida Hospital College to see what it was like. Why? Because he had told people that the nurses trained at this school seemed to him constantly give more tender, loving care to his dying friend than did those nurses who had been trained somewhere else. That is, he was able to see a big difference between them and the others in regard to their attitude toward his dying friend. Thus, he asked many questions about the college and his mission, and eventually he left a gift of $100,000 to educate more nurses, such as those he had seen in action. Yes, spirituality is a way of life. Wow. Yeah. Think about that. Can I tell a couple of stories? Yeah. Um, Kettering, Mr. Kettering yeah. was in um, or was in Dayton. Chicago. No, in oh. Chicago during the polio time, and uh, Glendale, no, Hinsdale Hospital yeah. was a, a rehab. And mm -hmm. he said, "Who are these people? He said, why are they getting people from all over and giving them help?" Well, long story short, goes to Dayton and puts up Kettering Medical Center. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, Porter. He was a patient at Glendale, mm -hmm. and through open door, he could see these nurses praying with the patients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, who are these people? Yeah. And he goes to Colorado and puts up Porter Adventist Hospital. This, this uh, yeah. uh, hospital that we're talking about, Florida, uh, Ginsburg Towers. I mean, then now he's putting up, a, I think it's a 22 to a story our building and giving oh. it millions and millions and millions of dollars involved. So I, I will, I will go. I will add to that. Look at the best hospital in China. Yeah, 
Dr. King, no, Dr. Shaw, Ran yeah. Ran Shaw, yeah. right? Said, call the Adventists here. We want we want a hospital like theirs. Actually, I was Sir I Ran Ran Shaw. I used to fly quite a bit, and you know, because you fly, they put you in the first class. So, there's a lady who started to talk. She says, "You're an Adventist. Do you know Ran Ran Shaw Hospital? Yeah. She just came from, and she's not an Adventist. Yeah. And she's talking about uh, Pune Adventist Hospital. I, I should tell you now that they have asked Adventists to come and start some completely new uh, schools that they nobody else in China is even doing them, like dental hygiene and so forth, like this. Amen. Be, uh, connected with Saran Ranch Hospital. Yeah, it gives as a reason to be glad that we belong. You know, it, mm -hmm. so many times this falls, feels like we're falling apart. Uh, uh, the hospital in Pune, Adventist Hospital, mm -hmm. a Hindu gentleman donated 100 beds. The building, yeah. you can have it. And then now he's, and I met him more than once, and he says, I want to donate another 100 beds in there. And we're not ready for it. But yes, it gives us great joy to belong, you see, that we're really not falling apart. Yeah. Do your people, do our people, look at your work and recognize that it is a step about, above what other people do? Jesus said, Matthew five sixteen. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about what we. <laughs> I was daydreaming. I'm sorry. Uh, I must have. Oh, Matthew five sixteen. You could read there. In the same way, your light must shine before people so that they will see the good things you do and praise your Father in heaven. It's from the yep. Good News Bible, Matthew 5, verse 16. Okay. They see the good work you do and they praise who? Your Father. Your Father, your father in heaven. That's an incredible lesson. Is that supposed to apply to our work today? Yes. Yes. We should. Do people praise God in heaven because of the work we do? None of us can avoid making some kind of impression on the people we interact with on a day-by-day -day basis. What kind of impression is that? When you think of stewardship, what comes to mind? And many people's minds uh, it might involve only financial matters. But it, is that what God intended? In business parlance, organizational theory says that stewardship refers to management's responsibility to develop and utilize properly all available resources. So what are we to do with the resources with which God has blessed us? Don't we believe that each one of us has at least one talent? How many of us have, many, have multiple talents? Peter had some clear words to say about that. 1 Peter 2.5 Come as living stones and let yourselves be used in building the spiritual temple where you will serve as holy priests to offer spiritual and acceptable sacrifices to God through Jesus Christ. Good news, Bible. But sac God doesn't want sacrifices. Yeah. Uh, I, so, I, what is, um, go ahead. And it's not just Solomon who said that. Uh, well, I mean, I should say that was Peter. Right. Not just Peter that said that. Solomon and, and Paul agreed. Ecclesiastes 9.10 Work hard at whatever you do, because there will be no action, no thought, no knowledge, no wisdom in the world of the dead. And that is where you are going. 1 Corinthians 10.31 Well, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do it all for God's glory. Mm. Unfortunately, many people today have compartmentalized their lives. In one compartment, they place their work. Here it is over here. In another compartment, they place their home life. In another compartment, they have a leisure life. And then in a final compartment, maybe they have a spiritual life. But God intends for our spiritual life to be integrated into every compartment of our lives. So what would happen if a significant proportion of Seventh-day Adventist church members took upon themselves Paul's attitude that our first work is to spread the gospel and whatever else we do is to support that work, that task? You may think that your job is unpleasant or even boring or perhaps even impossible. Consider these words from Paul. Ephesians 6, 5-8 Slaves, obey your human masters with fear and trembling, and do it with a sincere heart, 
as though you were serving Christ. Do this not only when they are watching you because you want to gain their approval, but with all your heart, do what God wants as slaves of Christ. Do your work as slaves cheerfully as though you serve the Lord and not merely human beings. Remember that the Lord reward everyone, whether slave or free, for the good work they do. And considering the work that was assigned to Adam, it is important to recognize that the curse was not placed on the work or on Adam, but was placed on the ground. The life of the toil and care which, which was henceforth to be man's lot was appointed in love. It was a discipline rendered needfully, needful by his sin to place a check upon the indulgence of appetite and passion. To, to develop habits of self-control, it was a part of God's great plan for man's early recovery from the ruin and degradation of sin. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 60. Okay, do we prob properly think of our work as God does? With all his wealth and all his wives, Solomon had some difficult words to say about work. I'm reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 18 through 24. Nothing that I had worked for and earned meant a thing to me, because I knew that I would have to leave it to my successor. And he might be wise or he might be foolish, who knows? Yet he will own everything I have worked for, everything my wisdom has earned for me in this world. It is all useless. So I came to regret that I had worked so hard. You work for something with all your wisdom, knowledge, and skill, and then you have to leave it all to someone who hasn't had to work for it. It is useless and it isn't right. You work and worry your way through life, and what do you have to show for it? As long as you live, everything you do brings nothing but worry and heartache. Even at night, your mind can't rest. It is all useless. The best thing anyone can do is to eat and drink and enjoy what he has earned. And yet I realize that even this comes from God. That's from the Good News Bible. Wow. Those, those are words of a person that is really in depression. Is yeah. It not? <laughs> it's crazy. But uh, was this Solomon writing this? Yeah. And look at what had happened. Yeah. Was it Rehoboam that was his son? Yep. And the, the kingdom got split? Yep. Yep. And he was right, though, what he was saying. Yeah, yeah but... but yeah, he, he was certainly not the best a, best advocate of God's cause. Uh, went off into uh, occultism and debauchery and all kinds yeah. of perverse... And yeah. bringing women from other places. All these exactly other... what the Lord says never to do. Yeah, and horses and all kinds of stuff that he wasn't supposed to bring from Egypt. He did, you know, just lined up all the things that God said he wasn't supposed to do. He did it. Wow. So how do you feel about your job? <laughs> well, did Solomon manage, how did Solomon manage to support those thousand wives and concubines? Did they help to, to support themselves? Did they rotate the cooking responsibilities? Why did he come to the place where he felt that it was all just a waste? I mean, you know, think of Think of the people in our world who work hard so they can leave a nice inheritance to their children. Look at Solomon is sorry he's leaving a nice inheritance to his children. Yeah. And how many children did he have with a thousand wives? He did not know. Who knows? I mean, your kids come along, a wife number 900, and she You're comes right. along with kids, and uh, who are you? Yeah. Wow, I can't. Even remember. now, by the way, in the Middle East, uh, father can have forty-seven kids. You know, and so yeah, uh, several wives. Yeah, yeah. And his method of divorce was: uh, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce three you three times. Even now, they're practicing. Yeah, yeah. three times said it's done. So. so, how do you understand these words? First, Second Thessalonians three ten. While we were with you, we used to say to you, whoever refuses to work is not allowed to eat. You see, that's why the Bible is not accepted, even in this country. Yep. Who was it? Who was it? Uh, uh, the democracy is going to end when the people who refuse to work, the money is taken away from the ones who work and give it to... It's yeah. Benjamin Franklin or someone... Uh, uh, 
made yeah. that statement. Right? Yeah. Happen. Notice that the problem is for those who refuse to work, not for those who for one reason or another cannot work, at least at the present time. So we're not talking about people who are temporarily or permanently disabled. We're talking about people who are choosing to be lazy. Step back and take a larger view of the work and its context. Work is one of only three things that we still have in value from the original creation of Eden. What are the three things? Well, we know that one of them is work. War what else? Worship? Well, no, it was very specifically part of worship. What was it? Uh, well, I thought this was going to be a really easy question. The Sabbath? Yeah, of course, oh, worship. And marriage. marriage. Yeah. And marriage. Of so course. the three things that we still have at, handed down directly from the times of Adam and Eve, marriage, the Sabbath, and work. Well, we have the Sabbath, and okay, we all recognize that work can at times have its downsides. Many of us will spend the majority of our waking hours as adults in working. Wouldn't it be best if we could feel that we had accomplished something for God during those hours? Now, I, I, let me speak for myself. I'm quite a few years past retirement, and I'm still working. And I work because I enjoy working with my staff, and I enjoy working with my patients. And the patients, I hear pe people telling me almost every week, so one of my students' patients will come in and say, I mean, I've, I've had people in their 40s say, you can't retire until I'm ready to die. <laughs> 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 well, anyway. Galatians 5.25, this, uh, go ahead. Sorry, who is that? I don't know. That's mine, I think. Uh, no, it's mine. Okay. You go. can take it. Okay. <laughs> <Down right. laughs> Galatians 5.25, the Spirit has given us life. He must also control our lives. Mm. Is God pleased with us when we do the, our be the best possible job we can, even if it's not directly spiritually related? God certainly blessed Bezalel, Aholiab, and those who worked with them to do an excellent job. What kind of work do you think we'll, we will do in heaven? Ever stopped and asked yourself about that? I think about it often. When you think of the millions, possibly they'll go to heaven. What are we going to live in? We're told we can get a, a home, but to fit everybody in, it's either a tremendously large place or we're going to live like beehives. Yeah. All in the little thingy here. There. <laughs> okay, well, there's, let's, let's talk about that. It's very clear that we're all supposed to have a place in the city. Uh, it seems pretty clear. It must be a tremendous and then, and then it's also true that we're also going to have a place where we can plant and, and grow our gardens and so forth. Right. So we have to have at least two places. Everyone has to have at least two places. So you're going to say, you're saying that, yes, we have, we're working but festivities time, let's go, like back, going back to Jerusalem. Remember earlier? Mm -hmm. We're going to Jerusalem for one week of festivities. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's going to be fun. Yep, oh, yep. Yeah. It's going to be fun. A lot, of, a lot of adjustments to what we're used to, though, I think. Now, I, 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 as I mentioned earlier, we're just having a, a wonderful gentleman uh, fix our property up and taking out yeah. Even the stuff we thought before was nice, he taken out and replaced with something which is a lot nicer, beautiful flowers and things. We're so excited about it. So now, in light of that, are we going to be able to plant new plants in heaven? Probably, but what do you do? Uh, is there any waste anywhere? I, 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 I pondered <laughs> this. The waste is a real challenge to, for the, our thinking, isn't it? Yeah. And I think jobs generally, most of us here have done a variety of jobs before we get up to our later years. Even the, you know, I found even the most mundane jobs, it's what you make of them. Mm -hmm. You get some uh, people don't want to do anything, but somebody's got to do it. Why can't mm -hmm. you just keep going at it? It's Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what the Lord is preparing for us. Yep. It's beyond, it's beyond our comprehension. So are we all going to be farmers? I'd love to be. Well, I think we, at, at least... To oh, start. you're going to have a business, sir. You know that. 
Well, I mean, what? You're going to be out of business. That's yeah, why I that's quit. Right. I'm that's why I quit. You see? I see. You're, you're going to be out of business. Uh, no my fee. job will yeah. be, nobody will need my health, yeah. health care anymore. Well, will we have to set aside some vacation time to travel to other worlds to visit them? So do we have to have somebody else water our gardens while we're gone? <laughs> I mean, I you think about you know you, I, now right now I'm rubbing out to watering my plants, make sure those new plants they 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 planted yeah. don't none of them die because they're beautiful. Yeah. And it, we have, it, we have these automatic sprinkler systems. Well, we know that in the Garden of Eden, how was it watered? Dew. Well, there dew. was dew. There was no rain. Morning yeah. rain. Morning yeah, right. dew. But one thing, though, uh, there's going to be common common areas that uh, by the river of mm -hmm. life, life yeah. there are going to be trees, trees. that uh, 12 months have uh, 12 different kinds of fruit. That's right. And the leaves are going to be for the healing of the nation. nation. What does that mean? I do not know, sir. You're the one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, there's several things that have been suggested. The biggest problems, let Carrie talk about this, the biggest problems, probably, if we really were honest with it, in our world are psychological problems. Yeah. Yeah. And if you go there and you could gather, go to that tree and take, pick a, some of the, 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 from the tree of life, and then you could take a leaf or two and think, look at this leaf. This God made this just for me. And if that could be a healing of the psychological problems of the world? Yeah, well, look. Um, the, I'm not sure how our body is going to be. We scientists say we have 70 trillion cells in our bodies, but you see, um, we have a second brain. It's called the large intestine. So the leaves that we eat, most of the food we're eating in this country and in the in other countries of the world are refined foods. So these mm -hmm. are pro-inflammatory foods that we're mm -hmm. eating. You yep. see, the neurotransmitters, 90% of the serotonin comes from the gut yep. bacteria. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, and, and so when we're not eating right, and that's why the Lord says, the leaves are going to be for the healing of the well, nations. All the vitamin B yeah. complex. We've yep. got people now that are starting to be more aware than we've been yep. for some generations that there are, there are things that are in Even the us herbals. Even through the throughout the years, we have been eating canned veggie meat, and that's probably the worst thing people could eat. I'm, I might be stoned. Oh, I might get stoned now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, uh, could the work of planting and harvesting take us away from our time for worshiping God? No. <laughs> After God created Adam, he did not think it was wrong to give him Eve. He did not say to Adam, isn't God enough? So. God gave our first parents quite a few things that would engage the, their attention and time the animals, the exquisite natural beauty, the responsibility of replenishing the earth, Genesis 1.28, having dominion over creation, Genesis 1.28, and finally working and keeping the Garden of Eden, Genesis 2.15. And you, you notice that some additions have been made there. That's in, the, in our Bible study guide. Does working together with fellow Christians develop a sense of togetherness? Yes. Do you think we will go along to, to our friends and say, boy, I like the way your garden is. Can you come help me do that in my garden? Several of the ancient patriarchs that we can read about apparently had a close relationship with God. It was described as walking with God. Jim? Genesis 5.22 After that, Enoch lived in fellowship with God for 300 years and had other children. And I interrupt there for a second. We've got a little bit of time left. You've heard this about the story of the small boy who was asked to, you know, in the King James seven, the King James version, it says, "In Enoch walked with God," and they asked the little boy, you know, and, and God took him. He went to heaven, and and they asked the little boy, "Well, how do you think that happened?" He says, "Oh, it was simple. He says, they took a long walk, and God says, oh, I guess we're closer to my house than I, we, are, we are to your house. We are to come to my house." Okay, go ahead. Genesis 6, 9 to 10. This is the story of Noah. He had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Noah had no faults and was the only good man of his time. He lived in fellowship with God. Genesis 48, 15. Then he blessed Joseph. 
May the God whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac serve, served bless these boys. The, the boys were Manasseh and Ephraim. And they were boys of whom? Joseph. Joseph. These were Joseph's sons, yes. And so he got the double portion of inheritance. He was, of course, the firstborn son of his favorite wife, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. So he gets a double portion. So he, he, he splits that between Joseph's two sons. Okay, go ahead. May God who has led me to this very day bless them. Did any of those who volunteered to work on the tabernacle at the foot of Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai consider it a burden to have to do so? Or were they ready volunteers? I think they were ready. I'm reading from Exodus chapter 35, verse 21. And everyone who wished to do so brought an offering to the Lord for making the tent of the Lord's presence. They brought everything needed for use in worship and for making the priestly garments. And that's from the Good News Bible. And if you read the context, it says that many women helped to make the coverings for the tent. Mm. What do they make those things out of? It talks about goats, skin. wool or something like that, and then skins or something. Yes. And did they, did they all, did they match together when they, got, when they put them together? It seems clear from what we can read that those who volunteered to help in building the tabernacle did so without any coercion of any kind. More than that, when Moses asked the entire congregation to donate various items from which to build the tabernacle, he had to finally tell them to stop donating. <laughs> Does that happen in church building projects in our day? Well, could you honestly say that your job is a service for God? Do you strive each day to do an excellent job using wisdom and skill? Do you enjoy your work? Do you look forward to going to work each day? Now, maybe not every day, but, <laughs> you know. Does taking a biblical view of your education and your work make it easier to enter into it with enthusiasm? What if you thought, okay, today I'm going to do something for the kingdom of God? Would that make it exciting? Would that make it interesting? Do we look forward to working in heaven? We've talked a little bit about that, that that's all about. Ellen White, you know, talks about the, the, the little kids that if they could climb up the mountain or if they felt like it, they could just fly up there. We have so many things to look forward to. We have, we have no idea about it. Just, just amazing, amazing, amazing. But we'll leave you with your own thoughts. Think about it. Let's pray. Our kind and wonderful Father, we've come now to think about work and all the implications of work and what it might mean and even the time when, sometime in the future when we can work in heaven and our beautiful garden plots that we'll have there. May that day come soon is our prayer in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen.